Okay, in this video we are doing problem set 32 from Calc AB, uh, problems and playlist in the description below. Let's take a look at the problems. So first up, uh, find y prime for y equals the quantity natural log of x minus sine of 3x all to the eighth. So it's the quantity natural log of x minus sine of 3x. We're raising that to the eighth power. We want the derivative of that. So this is a very much chain rule problem. We have something to the eighth, which means the derivative will be eight times that thing to the seventh. So that's what we're going to start with. Then we just need the derivative of that thing. So that thing is natural log of x. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And then minus the derivative of sine of 3x is 3 cosine of 3x. And that's it. Uh, that's the whole problem. So hopefully you're getting good at the chain rule. The, more, the better you get at the chain rule, the easier a lot of problems seem. Um, let's look at the next one. Given f of x equals the square root of 3x squared plus 5 and g of x equals 4x minus 3, we want to find d dx of f of g of x at x equals 2. All right, so we know that the derivative of f of g of x is just f prime of g of x, g prime of x. That is the chain rule. So definitely we know that. We want to evaluate this thing at 2, so that'll look like this, where I'm just going to use such that. The notation is really important. Like, you have to master the notation uh, I see people like struggle through calculus because they don't take, I don't know, the five minutes that it takes to just understand all the notation um, and make sure you're not making those mistakes. To solve this now, I'm going to need to find g of 2 and g prime of 2 and then f prime of whatever g of 2 is. So g of 2, I'm going to go up to g of x and sub in 2. That's 8 minus 3 is 5. So g of 2 is 5. Um, so at this point, I'm basically finding f prime of 5 times g prime of 2. Uh, to find f prime of 5, I'm going to just do it, right? f of x is the square root of 3x squared plus 5. Derivative of that requires the chain rule. So we'll have f prime of x is it's going to be 1 half the thing, which is 3x squared plus 5, to the negative 1 half, times the derivative of the thing, which is 6x. All right, now I'm going to take uh, 5 and sub it in there. And when I do that, I end up with f prime of 5 is... 1 half, uh, 5 squared is 25 times 3 is 75, plus 5 is 80, so 80 to the negative 1 half, and then times 30. Um, that on its own actually simplifies into 15 over the square root of 80. You can simplify that further. Well, can you? You can simplify the square root of 80. I don't know how much it helps. Um, I'm not going to bother right now. I don't know if I will at all. Um, and then I need to find g prime of 2 so I can plug it in, but g of x is 4x minus 3. So g prime is 4, so g prime of anything is going to be 4, in particular g prime of 2. So really I just need to multiply these numbers. Um, so my answer is going to be, so the 30 over 2 is 15. So 15 over root 80 times 4, uh, 60 over root 80, which I think is also 3 root 5 if you prefer to write your answer that way. All right, next up, a particle moves with position x of t equals, you can, uh, you can maybe notice if you're paying close attention that I had a typo there that I tried to fix. Uh, x of t equals 2t minus a times 2 plus 3b. In terms of a and b, when is the particle at rest? All right, we're at rest when velocity is zero, so we need to find velocity. Um, we need to connect velocity to position, so v of t is x prime of t. And then uh, I'm going to use the product rule. You could expand it and then just use the power rule. Product rule is fine with me. So it's going to be first, 2t minus a. Derivative of the second is 1 plus second which is t plus 3b. Derivative of the first is 2. And then we need to clean this up. So I'm just going to like distribute. So I get 2t minus a plus 2t plus 6b. That should be 6b. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, tragedy. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to try to fix it. Fixing on the fly. Just didn't distribute the 2 there. You know, it's like as I was saying it, I was like, I feel like there's going to be a mistake here. And then that's going to perpetuate all the way through. So this, uh, here we go. i got to fix this. It's all right. Is it all right? I don't know. We're all forgiving people here. This, uh, so now I need to set this equal to zero. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have a mistake here too. So I get 4t uh, minus a, that should be 6b. Uh, ugh. Fun times. Will I still get this done in under 10 minutes, which is the obligation for these problem sets? I hope so. Am I even making a mistake? Yeah, it definitely should have been 2t plus 6b. Okay, we get this. There's going to be one more mistake. 
uh, because I have to like set it equal to zero, right? So I'm gonna add A, I'm gonna subtract six B, I'm gonna divide by four. So I get T is equal to, let's fix it one last time. And then we can move on. Say goodbye to this problem. All right, we all make mistakes. That's why you gotta check your work. Should you check your work before you record the video? Debatable. All right, next problem. Given y equals 2x squared my, uh, nope, over x minus 1, given that, then at what ordered pairs x, y does y, I write some weird sounding problems when I read them back, does y equal f of x have a slope of negative 6? All right, so slope of negative 6 means the derivative is going to be uh, negative 6. So I need to find the derivative. So quotient rule, because it's quotient. Bottom, derivative of the top is 4x minus top which is 2x squared, derivative of the bottom is 1, all over the bottom squared. Uh, I think it does make sense to kind of simplify this, so I'm going to expand, hopefully correctly. So 4x squared minus 4x minus 2x squared, yes. 4x squared minus 2x squared is 2x squared, so 2x squared minus 4x over the quantity x minus 1 squared. I think that's good. Now I'm going to set that equal to negative 6, because that would make the slope equal negative 6. I'm going to cross multiply and simultaneously expand uh, x minus 1 squared. So 2x squared minus 4x equals negative 6, the quantity x squared minus 2x plus 1. All right, we have that. So now what I need to do is distribute, I'm going to distribute the negative 6 and move everything over. So it'll be like there's negative 6x squared on the right. I'm going to bring it over. 2 plus 6 is 8x squared. Um, and then keep doing that. So then I'll have, uh, you get plus 12, but when you subtract it, you get minus 16x, and then you have minus 6, but when you bring it over, you get plus 6. All right, then I'm going to divide by 2, because no one would want to factor that thing with that 2 there. Um, and then here, I'm going to try 2 and 2, because I think it works. Um, and then if I just go minus 1, minus 3, that should work out. Um, so that means that the x-coordinates of our points are at one half and three halves. And then uh, we need to take those and find the x, y ordered pair, which means we gotta plug in one half to here and then also three halves to there. Plugging in one half, you get two times one fourth is one half divided by negative one half. One half divided by negative one half is negative one. And then plugging in three halves, uh, we are gonna get uh, nine fourths times two is nine halves divided by one half is nine. So we get that. All right, that is it for this problem set. Sorry I made that mistake on the one problem. Who knows, there could be hundreds of mistakes in these problem sets. I'm trying to do them at a reasonable pace. Um, anyway, hope this was helpful and good luck.